a whole bunch of scrap stuff that I've had in my shed forever. An old drawer, a teapot with a missing lid, and a door handle. I'm gonna take the handle off the drawer that was there already, and I'm gonna paint the drawer with some of my crackle paint using the Elmer's glue. I'm gonna spread that glue all over that drawer, and then we're gonna paint some chalk paint on top of it. And as it dries, you're gonna see some wonderful cracks show up all throughout the paint. Once it's completely dried, I had some stain and I'm gonna put the stain over top of the crackle paint. It's just gonna age it and give it more of a vintage look. I'm replacing the knob that was on there with this knob so we have a place to hang the drawer when it's all finished. I'm gonna tape off the inside of that teapot. I've taken it outside and I'm spraying it with this lovely spray paint. Now the teapot's completely dry, I'm gonna take that tape out from the inside and we're gonna attach it to the top of that drawer. I'm using this old door pull and I'm going to screw it into the top of the drawer attaching the teapot. I found this plaque at the dollar store and it's had a piece of paper decoupaged on it. I'm going to rip off that decoupage and get it cleaned down right to the wood and we're going to turn it into a sign. And to make the sign we're going to use the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. I designed these graphics printed it off on my laser jet printer, made sure to reverse the text. I've painted that little plaque with a couple coats of my homemade chalk paint. I sanded it, distressed it, and then put the graphics on. And now it's been 24 hours. I dampened the paper, rubbed it off, and it's all set. I wanted to age that teapot a little bit, so I took some 80 grit sandpaper and just went around the edges so it looked a little bit more old and vintage. Had this piece of chain that I'm gonna loop onto the top this spindle that was cut in half is going to go on the bottom. Hang tight with me, this is super cute. This is what I turned it into. A fun little birdhouse. The teapot acts as a little house for the birds to go in. Home tweet home. The little spindle they can perch on. How cute is that? This project, I had this old rusty toolbox in my shed forever, full of little bits and pieces. I cleaned it out because I knew what I wanted to use it for. I went to the hardware store, got some small nuts and bolts because I'm going to attach some brackets onto this toolbox. I drilled two holes in each side to attach the brackets and then we're gonna use the nuts and the bolts to attach it. I also put two holes in the bottom of the toolbox in case it ever gets any water or anything in it because I'm gonna put this outside so the water can drain out. I'm gonna clean it up really well, take the sticker off that was on it, put a couple holes in the back so we can attach it to my shed. I've put a block of wood on my shed because we want to be able to open up the door of that toolbox when it's mounted and there's enough room at the back. And this is what I created with two brackets. I attached the toolbox and now I have a catch-all toolbox on the outside of my shed for all of my gardening tools. This poor little vase has been in my shed for a Probably since last Halloween, I painted it orange, I'm not liking it right now. I had this cement color oops paint that I found at Home Depot. I turned it into some sand paint and I'm going to paint over that orange paint with this gray sand paint and it almost gives it a cement look. So I've turned this orange little pot into this beautiful cement looking planter for my patio. This is adorable. It was a little bit rusty, so I cleaned it all off, gave it a little bit of a sand, and now I'm painting it with my homemade chalk paint. Once it's completely dry, we're gonna put some graphics on with the Mod Podge Reverse Graphic Transfer Method. I love this graphic, Farm Life, and I think it's really fitting for this shovel. I'm gonna cut it in half because there's that little bit of the dip in the shovel, and I want the graphics to be able to form around it. Applied the Mod Podge, put it where I wanted it, let it sit for 24 hours, and then we're gonna rub off the paper. Now a little tip when you're doing projects like this, if you don't want the rust to leach through again, you can always use a spray primer first and then the chalk paint on top of it. I didn't use the primer because I'm okay if the rust does leach through. I sealed it up really well with some engine enamel because it's gonna be out in the elements, and I think this is perfect to put out in the garden at the farm. You can just stick the end of the shovel into a bucket full of flowers and it's adorable. For this next project, all I used was an old colander that I found at the thrift store, a piece of a spindle and a wooden ring. I'm going to drill four holes in the colander evenly across the top of it and then we're going to use some 
twine and measured it out to the length that we need to where we want to hang it. Once it's all measured out, we're going to attach it to that wooden ring and tie it to the colander. I wanted to give it a little bit of character, so I drilled a hole through that spindle, had a piece of wire, and I'm going to attach it to the bottom of the colander. So I've taken a colander and a spindle and a little bit of twine, and I've made it into a really adorable plant hanger that you can put on your porch, and the little dangly spindle on the bottom finishes it off completely. Another thing that I always save from the scrap metal bin are ends of rakes. They turn into really great projects to make into coat hangers or to hang jewelry from. And this one I'm gonna to put together with a bunch of scrap wood. I had this piece of wood, I think it came off an old antique table. I sealed it up with some penetrating oil and I had this old chippy piece of baseboard that I'm going to add onto the bottom. I sealed it up with some matte polyacrylic sealer so the paint wouldn't chip off anymore. Put on some Gorilla Glue and I'm going to nail it onto the bottom of that piece of wood. Now I have no idea where this little bracket came from or what it was off of, but my rake fit perfect into it to hang. So I'm gonna screw it into that piece of wood and then we're gonna put the rake into it and it'll hold it in place. And this was what I was able to create with a bunch of junk, an old rake, a piece off of a table, an old piece of baseboard, and it's a beautiful piece to hang in an entranceway to keep your keys, or you can keep it in the kitchen and hang some utensils on it. It's gorgeous. Let's make a sign for the garden with a scrap piece of pine. I wanna make it look old and vintage, so I'm taking a hammer, really dinging it all around the edges and anywhere where it would have naturally aged. Then I'm taking some stain and I'm gonna stain that board completely. It's gonna soak into all those little nooks and crannies that we created with the hammer. I just love being able to take a new piece of wood and make it look old and vintage and rustic. Next, we're going to put on a coat of black homemade chalk paint. All these steps might seem like a lot of work, but in the end, it's taking a plain piece of wood and making it look more authentic and making it look better when it's turned into a sign. We're now going to do a crackle paint technique on this. I'm using my Elmer School Glue and I'm pouring a generous amount on top of that paint after it's dried. We're going to spread that glue all over that piece of wood. And then once we have the glue spread out, we're going to let it sit for about a minute. We want it to start to get a little bit tacky. It's all ready now. We're gonna take our homemade chalk paint and in long strokes from one end to the other, we're going to paint on top of that glue while it is still tacky. And you'll see as that paint dries, it's gonna create a crackle finish that looks fantastic and authentic and old. It's completely dry now. I'm gonna sand around the edges and we're ready to turn this into a sign. I've printed my graphic off on regular computer paper, sizing it to my project, and then we're going to apply it onto that wood with some Mod Podge. This process will also work with an inkjet printer. I have lots of tutorials comparing the inkjet against the laser jet on my YouTube channel. You can check that out if you want. You're gonna put a light amount of that Mod Podge over the graphic. This product that I'm using is exactly like Mod Podge. I couldn't find Mod Podge when I was looking for it and this works just as well. I bought this one at Michael's from Deco Art. You have to make sure when you're doing this technique that you reverse your text. If you don't, when you make your sign, your letters will be backwards. It's 24 hours later. I let it dry completely and now I've got a rag with a little bit of water on it and I'm dampening the paper so the graphics just start to show through. And then I'm using my fingers and we're rubbing away all of that paper. And as we do that, the graphics are going to stay on our sign. The paper is going to rub off and it's that easy to make a sign with Mod Podge. I'm gonna hang this out in my garden, so I need something to hang it from. I'm drilling a couple holes in the top and I'm gonna put through some twine, tie it nice and tightly, and then we're gonna seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer. This is an outdoor formula because it's going to be out in the elements and I want my sign to last for a long time. If you're making signs and they're going to be inside, you can buy the water-based polyacrylic sealer for indoors and it works perfect. So that's how easy it is to create your own signs with a little bit of Mod Podge, computer paper, and a piece of wood. What do you think? 
This might be one of my favorite signs that I've ever made. I made this sign in one of my very first videos when I first started my YouTube channel and I just love it and I know some of you probably haven't seen it so I wanted to share it. This is a piece of salvaged wood from a table. It's an actual table leg and I'm going to decoupage a beautiful floral napkin onto it. A little trick when you're decoupaging and you're putting more than one napkin on, I always like to rip the end that you're going to match the next napkin up with and it just helps it blend in better. When I do projects like this, it always makes me feel better for not getting rid of all those bits and pieces that I save. The table legs, the spindles, the old rusty bits and pieces because one day I always put together something that's absolutely beautiful just from junk. Once it was all dry, I took it outside and I sanded all around the edges and got rid of all that leftover napkin and it blended it in beautifully. And now we're gonna seal it up with some outdoor polyacrylic sealer. And we're gonna use the same technique again, the reverse technique. I use this, like I said before, for almost everything. It's so affordable and easy to do. Uh, it sometimes takes a little bit of practice to get the feel of rubbing off the paper, but once you get the hang of it, it works fantastic. You don't have the cost of the vinyl if you're using a Cricut, and with a stencil, you're limited to what signs you can make unless you buy all kinds of stencils. With this, you just download your graphic, print it, and make a sign. I wanna hang my sign to the table leg. I've got these fence staples, you can find them at the hardware store, and this old chain, and I'm gonna attach the two together. And the sign is all ready for the paper to be rubbed off. And we're gonna seal it up with our polyacrylic sealer. I had two of these table legs. I made a vintage garden and the fresh flowers and I absolutely adore them. That floral napkin looked perfect on the legs and the signs finished them off. I've got a lot of signs that I'm showing you today because there's so many ideas of stuff that you can make for your outdoor decor or your garden. This one is made on a piece of pallet wood and I'm gonna make a flower market sign. I've sized the graphics to fit on this piece of pallet wood and we're ready to use a Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. A free piece of pallet wood made beautiful. This is a fun one. I did this one recently with pallet wood and cling wrap, and it's just a painting technique that's really great to do with kids and lots of fun. Get out all of your acrylic paint, all the different colors, and we're gonna mix and match. And we're just gonna drop paint here and there on the board, doesn't matter, this is just for fun, and it doesn't matter if it's messy or if you get too much in one place and not enough in another, it'll all turn out perfect. And then you're gonna get a piece of saran wrap or cling wrap and lay it right into that paint. And this is where it's lots of fun with kids. Just let them use their fingers and blend all of that paint in together. And just keep blending until you get the color that you like. And when you're blending two or three colors together, you're making other colors. It's just so much fun. And these are beach and pool theme. I'm doing a beach sign and I'm doing a hello summer sign. Love the way that they turned out. The first project that I'm gonna work on is this pitchfork. I actually got this pitchfork quite a while ago from the dump. Dug it out, 
brought it home and I painted it back then with some chalk paint and it started to weather a little bit. So I'm gonna refresh it with some of my homemade chalk paint and I'm gonna put a really pretty graphic on it. Okay, my chalk paint has completely dried and now I'm gonna put this welcome graphic on it. If you've been following my channel, you know I love my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer to put on my graphics and that's what I'm gonna use for this project. I've printed off this graphic on my LaserJet printer. Make sure you reverse your text if you want to do a project like this, just on regular computer paper. And all the graphics that I'm using today in all three of my projects are available in my Etsy store. I'm going to use my Mod Podge mat, and I'm just going to put a light coat over the whole graphic. Make sure you're covering the whole piece of paper, and then I'm going to flip it over and center it where I want it on my pitchfork and then rub any wrinkles or bubbles out so it's nice and smooth. I have quite a few tutorials on my um, channel that go really into depth into this method. If you want to learn how to do it, um, I'll put a link down below in the description so you can go back and you can watch those and I'll show you a more thorough step-by-step -step tutorial. Now my Graphic has completely dried. I've let it sit overnight and I'm just taking a damp rag and I'm just wetting that paper just so you can start to see those graphics through. And then I'm gonna rub off the paper and you're left with a really pretty graphic. I've sealed it up with some outdoor polyacrylic sealer and look how cute this is. These look so cute, propped up on your porch, some flowers around them for a farmhouse feel. Old milk can that I have had on my porch for quite a while, the paint has faded on it, so I'm gonna refresh it. I'm gonna put on a coat of my homemade black chalk paint over the entire milk can. And I'm gonna put a customized graphic on this of our last name and the year that we were established. I'm gonna make my graphic the size of a piece of paper. So I'm putting this on just to, as a guide so I can tape off the area that I want to paint with some white chalk paint. And if you wanna do a project like this, make sure you use some good painter's tape so the paint doesn't bleed through when you paint it on. So now that I have all the tape on, I'm gonna peel that piece of paper away and I have a perfect square, the same size as a piece of paper. And I'm just gonna take my white chalk paint and I'm gonna paint in between that square and it'll probably take two or three coats to get it um, covered really well. If you're interested in me doing one of these custom graphics for you with your last name and a year on them, I do have it listed in my Etsy store so you can head over there and check it out and I can custom make you one. Now this is completely dried and I'm just gonna peel away that painter's tape and I'm left with a perfect square. And this is the graphic that I'm gonna use on my milk can and I think it's the perfect graphic at a front door. And again, I've put this in my Word program, sized it to the size that I want it, printed it off on my laser jet printer on regular computer paper, and I'm gonna use my Mod Podge mat, and I'm going to put it right in that painted square, and then I'm gonna flip it over after I've got all the Mod Podge on, get all the wrinkles and bubbles out of it, and then I'm gonna let it sit overnight and dry really well before I rub off the paper and the graphics will be left on my milk can. Okay, everything is completely dried. I'm taking a rag, just dampening it till you can start to see the graphics through and then rubbing off all of that paper. Now I wanted to show you sometimes not all the graphics turn out perfect. I was rubbing this and a little piece of the G kind of um, rubbed away. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to add a little bit of Mod Podge right on that black ink of where it rubbed off and then press it down exactly where it goes on that graphic and line it up really well. And then I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry really thoroughly and it should fix itself and um, have that black ink transfer back onto that graphic on my milk can. I just wanted to show you that not every graphic that I do turns out perfect and it takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of practice to get the hang of it. And even with me doing these graphics for a lot of years, I still have some that don't turn out perfect. But I love the way that this one turned out. It just kind of gives it that farmhouse feel and kind of rustic look. I'm gonna seal this milk can with some polyacrylic sealer outdoor. You wanna make sure if this is gonna be outside in the elements, you're using an outdoor formula to make sure that it's sealed really well. 
I'm so glad I finally got around to kind of sprucing this milk can up. It's been sitting at my front door and it's kind of looked dingy. And it's one of those projects that I never really got around to doing, but I love it now and I can't wait to get it at my front door. Love the graphic also. And if you're interested in me making a personalized graphic for you to do a project like this, make sure you head over to my Etsy store and check it out. The third project is a face off of an old antique dresser. I couldn't get the handles off of it, so I thought I would just leave it and then I would use the other side to make into a farmhouse welcome sign for my front door. So I flipped it over and I'm gonna paint the back of that dresser door with some black chalk paint and that's going to be the front of my sign. I love my homemade chalk paint recipe, works fabulous. I'll put a link down below in the description so you can go and check out that recipe and mix some up for yourself. Now I'm gonna use some Vaseline along the edges of this sign so I can make it look chippy and vintage and I'm just putting some on my fingertip and I'm just putting it anywhere on the sign where it would have some natural wear all around the edges and on the top and on the bottom. And then I put on a coat of some brown chalk paint. Gonna put on some more Vaseline on top of that brown chalk paint, just in random little spots around the edges. And then anywhere you've put the Vaseline, the paint will not adhere to it and it'll show the color underneath of it. And now I'm gonna put a coat of my homemade white chalk paint and then I'm gonna put another coat of my white homemade chalk paint and then I'm gonna take it outside, give it a really good sanding with a coarse sandpaper and you'll see all the chippiness that that Vaseline leaves um, and shows all those different colors through the edge of the wood and gives it a real rustic, really vintage look. Now we're ready to put the graphics on. Again, the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer. I love it. This is the graphic that I'm going to use. Welcome to our home. I have put the graphic into my word program and I have sized it to fit my board and I'm going to use my Mod Podge mat. If you've bought my graphics or if you have made your own graphics and you're not really sure how to reverse or how to size within your word program, I have a full tutorial on how to do that. I'll put a link down below in the description and you can go and watch it and it'll help you out. This is set overnight. I'm just taking a damp rag. I'm just dampening it just so you can start to see the graphics show through. You wanna be really careful because if you put too much water on this, it will take the graphic away um, and you'll rub it off as you're working away on it. So you just, it kind of takes practice to see how much water you actually need to take off the paper. And once you get that technique down, you're golden. And this type of sign, you can put a hanger on the back and hang it on your door, or you can just prop it up beside your door and it looks fantastic too. And now I'm just gonna put a coat of my polyacrylic sealer in an outdoor formula and seal it up really well. And our welcome to our home sign is all finished and I love the way that turned out and I love it even more that I was able to upcycle an old front of a dresser drawer that was in the landfill and make it into something that was crappy and make it pretty.
found these fabulous candle lanterns in the dump. They were dirty, they were really sun bleached, but they were still in really good shape and I knew I could perk them up and make them beautiful again. I'm gonna take the handle off the one lantern. It just has a jump ring and I can just squeeze it apart and take it off. And I'm gonna put some masking tape around that metal piece cause I don't want it to get any spray paint on it. I'm taking it outside and I'm just gonna give it a light coat of white spray paint. I wanna give it that sun bleached white color. Obviously somebody didn't see the potential that these lanterns still had because they turned out beautiful just with a real light coat of spray paint and brought it back to life for free. The glass votive holder on the inside of the one lantern was still there, was not broken. I cleaned it up and put in a little tea light and the other lantern, back in one of my older videos, I made some candles with a tuna tin can, and that's one of those, and it fit in there perfect. And look how gorgeous these are. Sun bleached, kind of white look, much better than the before, and they're ready to put out on my patio. Second project is this old lantern that I found in the scrap metal bin. It's really rusty, but it has so much character and I wanna preserve that rust. I don't wanna paint it. So I'm taking my engine enamel and I'm gonna give it a really good coat and seal in all that gorgeous rust. I love using the engine enamel for this type of a project. It seals it up really well so you can put it out in the elements and you can find it at a automotive store or you can also find it on Amazon. And I'll put the link down below in the description so you can check that out. The engine enamel that I bought has a bit of a gloss finish and it just made that rust pop. I love it. In one of my previous videos, I did some tin can upcycles and I made this tin can. I loved it and wasn't quite sure what to do with it. I know what to do with it today. I made a homemade napkin and decoupaged it on top of this tin can and it fit in this lantern perfect. I added an ivy and it is going to look gorgeous on my front porch. I've taken this rusty, dull looking lantern and made it into a beautiful piece of outdoor home decor. And I think the choice to save that rust color was the perfect one. I found this old birdhouse and it has definitely seen better days. The paint that was on it has completely uh, disintegrated on it and some of the nails were popped out and it just needed some TLC, but it was still in good enough shape that I'm going to be able to fix it up. Just taking my hammer and just pushing in any of those nails that had started to pop out and then I'm gonna give it a really good sanding with an 80 grit sandpaper so it'll be ready to paint. I am loving this yellow paint. I love picking up these little testers too. It's just the right amount of paint for a couple projects. And I'm also loving this paintbrush from Zebra, the Palm Pro. It works fantastic to get in all those little nooks and crannies on your small projects. I love all of their paintbrushes and they have different types for different projects. I'll put the link down below in the description and you can head over to their website and check them out because it is a must for paintbrushes. I thought the blue was gonna really complement the yellow. So I'm going to do a salt painting technique on the roof to give it a rustic kind of chippy look. I'm going to paint on the paint. This is just a regular latex paint, a sample that I bought at Home Depot, and I'm just painting it all over the roof. And then once I have that done, while the paint is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle on pickling salt. You can use any type of salt, but the pickling salt, I like the texture that it gives and the chippiness, it's just a nice coarse salt. And just sprinkle it right into that wet paint. Once everything's all dry, I'm taking it outside because it is messy and I'm sanding it down with my 80 grit sandpaper. I think it turned out fantastic. I love the chippy feel and I'm gonna add some embellishments. I found this old door pole and this dresser drawer pole and I'm gonna add them onto the birdhouse just as some focal points.
and that looks 100% better than that birdhouse that I found in the dump at the wood pile. I was able to upcycle it and make it pretty again, and it's ready for some renters. Now, this is a whole bunch of things that I found put together. This wire basket and this wooden trivet. I'm not sure what it was off of or where it was from. It's really sturdy and beautiful. I knew I wanted to use that in this project and an old spindle off a table. I'm going to give the wire basket and the trivet a coat of black spray paint. I find sometimes when I find things, I just tuck them away and it takes a while for me to get inspired and figure out what I wanna do with them. And this is one of these projects. I had all three of these things tucked away and it just all of a sudden came to me and I put it together. I drilled a hole down the middle of the trivet and I'm doing a little test hole in the bottom of the spindle and I'm gonna screw those two pieces together. I'm using these staple nails to put the basket on top of the spindle. It was a little tricky to get that hammer in and out of there, but I made it work and I got it on there nice and sturdy. And I've created a beautiful planter with just junk, the wire basket, the spindle and that trivet on the bottom and it all pulled together beautifully. So that's why sometimes I can create these wonderful projects because I don't throw anything out because you never know when you're going to need it. This project we're going to upcycle this glass coffee jar and a solar light from the dollar store. I want to paint the glass jar and the first step that I like to do when painting glass is to give it a light spray of primer and then I had some of this accent stone spray paint. I wanted to give it a little bit of texture and it works fantastic for that. I'm going to take the stake out of the bottom of the solar light, fill up that glass jar with some gravel from my driveway, get out my E6000 and put a little bit around the rim of that glass jar and just set the solar light into it. The weight of the gravel in the glass jar keeps it from tipping over and I added some twine around the neck of it for embellishment and once the sun goes down the solar light will light up. I was so lucky to find this flower press at the thrift store. It was super affordable and I thought why not give it a try. It's so easy to use. I just headed out to the garden. I collected some flowers and pressed them in this flower press and if you don't have one of these you can always just use a book and put something heavy on it and leave it for a few weeks. And this one is one that I did a few weeks ago, is simply gorgeous. Now we have some daisies, some leaves to experiment. And once they're all done, we can use them in our DIY projects. I set these flowers aside and let them dry for a few weeks. And now it's time for the big reveal. Look how beautiful they turned out. All these flowers were freshly picked from my garden and then pressed. The best part is you can use them in various ways with your paper crafts, decoupaging them onto glass jars, the possibilities are endless. And if you ever need inspiration, hop onto Pinterest and search for dried flower DIYs to find countless ideas for using these creations. This next DIY project, we're gonna explore the magic of fresh flowers combined with watercolor paper. Although using regular computer paper works too, I find that the watercolor paper yields the best results. So don't hesitate to try both and see what works for you. Let's start by taking a sheet of that watercolor paper and gently folding it in half. And now it's time to venture out into the garden to find some Black Eyed Susans. That's what I'm going to use for this project. I'm very gently removing those petals. I find that the center part of the flower is a bit too thick for this project. You just want thin leaves or thin petals. I've laid them out in a flower design on top of that watercolor paper. And then I'm gonna get a page protector or a plastic sleeve and lay it over top of those petals. We're gonna get out a hammer and we're just gonna hammer away. And as you're pounding on those leaves or petals, the natural dye is going to soak into that watercolor paper. This is where you're gonna to have to just experiment a little bit because some flowers and some leaves and petals just work better than others. You want something that has a lot of natural dye in it and it's thin and you're gonna be able to pound it in. And I've created a beautiful one-of-a-kind greeting card with some flowers from my garden. And this is a hang tag or a gift tag that I created with a Cosmos. Our next upcycling project, we have some thrift store frames that I'm gonna transform into some rustic beauties by adding some botanical prints inside. I'm not a fan of that shiny dated appearance of the frames, so I'm gonna use some sandpaper and give it that rustic look that's perfect to complement these botanical prints. 
For this part, we'll use that watercolor paper again, which you can easily find at any craft store or on Amazon. I'll put the link down below in the description. And we're gonna simply cut two pieces of that watercolor paper to fit the inside of that frame dimension. There are so many frames at the thrift store, they're a dime a dozen, so you're gonna be sure to find something that will work for this type of a project. Now comes the fun part. I gathered some leaves from my garden, I got some acrylic paint, and created some unique stamps. By dabbing the leaves with paint, you can use these stamps to create beautiful botanical patterns on watercolor paper. Next DIY project, bringing the outdoors inside. I found a dried branch from one of my trees and I trimmed it down to the perfect size. This branch is gonna become a fantastic trellis for one of my house plants, allowing its leaves to gracefully trail up. My Ponthol's plants need some love, so I decided to gently guide its trails up onto this twig with just a few twist ties. And I created this beautiful trellis for it. Trellises in stores can be really expensive, but believe me, using this simple branch from your yard is just as beautiful and it won't cost you a dime. Next is a piece of driftwood I found during a beach stroll. I brought it home with me and I decided to give it a little makeover. I applied one coat of my homemade white chalk paint and then let it dry completely. Next, I printed off my graphic on my laser printer, ensuring that I reversed the text and resized it to fit the driftwood perfectly. I attached the graphic using my Mod Podge mat and placed it on the driftwood to make sure it was centered in exactly want it, where I wanted it. I smoothed out any bubbles or wrinkles and I set it aside and let it dry for 24 hours. After the 24 hours, I took a damp rag and I gently dabbed it on the paper. And as I do this, you're gonna see the graphics start to show through. I'm gonna carefully rub off the paper, leaving the graphic beautifully imprinted on this piece of driftwood. Now, whenever I look at this beautiful piece of driftwood, it's gonna remind me of that lovely day I spent at the beach. To protect the graphic, I'm gonna add a little bit of shine and I sealed it with some polyacrylic sealer. Now we can put it in our home or our cottage or give it as a gift. This next DIY is gonna change the way you look at rocks forever. I gathered some small rocks from our last vacation and decided to give them a creative makeover. With a transfer technique using Mod Podge and my laser printer, like my last project, I printed little quotes that would fit perfectly on the rocks. It's been 24 hours, I'm dampening that paper and then rubbing it off and that graphic's gonna be left on that stone. This technique works wonders, especially on a non-painted surface like a rock as it's porous and it allows for that Mod Podge to soak into that rock and do a really good transfer. Once we've finished rubbing off all of that paper, it's time to seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer. If you plan to place these rocks outside, make sure you're using an outdoor formula so they can withstand the elements without any worries. Imagine placing these rocks in various little spots around your town or village or city, creating a lovely treasure hunt for others to enjoy. People can pick them up and if they like, replace them with one of their own created rocks. It's such a wonderful project to spread joy and creativity around. Okay, next project. I found this old candlestick holder and this old teapot. Everything had been given kind of a rough coat of black spray paint. I am going to fix it up and upcycle it into something very beautiful. We're going to paint on a couple coats of my homemade white chalk paint. 
And once I've let the couple coats of the chalk paint dry completely, I've got a baby wipe. You can use a baby wipe or you can use a wet cloth. And I'm just going to rub away at the paint in just areas where it would have naturally aged and just take away the paint. And it's just going to give it that old vintage look. This is a great technique when you don't want to sand and ruin the surface underneath your project. You can just use a baby wipe or a damp cloth and you can see how it just brings out those colors from underneath and I love the look. Now I want to put this graphic on my teapot. I'm going to be using my Mod Posh reverse graphic transfer method and this graphic's available in my Etsy store if you want to try out this project afterwards. I'm just going to put a light amount of the Mod Posh mat on that graphic put it on the teapot and then set it aside and let it dry for 24 hours. This technique works the best on a laser jet printer. Don't forget to reverse your text. Okay, it's the next day. I'm taking a damp rag. We're going to just wet the paper and you can tell you can just start to see the graphics show through and then rub off the paper. We're gonna be left with a beautiful graphic on our project. I'm now gonna attach the teapot to the candlestick holder using my E6000. It bonds really well. I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue. I know some people have said that you shouldn't mix the two. I've never had any problems and it's always bonded really well. Set it aside, we're gonna let it dry until the next day. And then we are ready to seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer. I love this clear gloss. And I've taken this teapot and candlestick holder and this is what I've created. I filled it up with some fresh herbs and it's beautiful to set on your patio or out in your garden area or even in your kitchen and you can clip off your herbs as you need them. Now let's upcycle this scrap piece of wood. I did a chippy paint technique with some Vaseline to make it look really distressed around the edges and I'm going to add this garage graphic using the same technique as I did on the teapot. Mod Podge matte finish. We're gonna put it all over the graphic, set it down, wait for the next day, rub off all the paper. We're left with a fantastic graphic. And as you can see, I just love this technique. It's so nice and crisp. I'm using my laser jet printer and I'm just using regular computer paper. And if you're doing this technique yourself, make sure to remember to reverse your text or your letters will be backwards. So I've taken this scrap piece of cutoff from that cabinet door and turned it into a beautiful garage sign Love the chippy paint on it. Would be a great gift to give to grandpa or dad to put up in their garage. Next up, I'm going to be showing you how you can use eggshells as adorable little plant pots to kick off your gardening season. I'm making a little box out of tin foil to keep our eggshells from rolling around. It's an easy and practical way to keep them organized and all in one place. If you have an old loaf pan or a dish that would work for this project, that would be great. Now it's time to fill up our tin foil dish with eggshells. Arrange them closely together to keep them from rolling around. And once that's done, grab some potting soil and fill each eggshell with a small amount. This is a quick and easy way to help you grow plants strong and healthy. And yes, you can absolutely plant the eggshells with the new seeds directly into the ground. In fact, doing so, you can provide nutrients to the soil as the eggshells decompose over time. Just make sure you gently crush the eggshells before planting them to allow the roots to penetrate through. Or as your seeds get bigger, you can transplant those little seedlings from the eggshells into larger containers or directly into the ground once they've grown a bit bigger. Spritz them with a little bit of water each day and watch them grow and get ready for your garden. Another way to upcycle eggshells is to grind them up into small pieces and mix them into your potting soil. This is a great way to provide nutrients to your plants, especially your indoor house plants. Simply mix the eggshells into the soil until it's really well incorporated. And this is an easy and effective way to give your plants a little bit of extra love. Next eggshell DIY upcycle, we are going to turn the eggshells into a fine powder. I'm using my coffee grinder that I found at the thrift store. You always be on the lookout for little appliances like this that you can add to your craft room that are affordable so you don't have to buy brand new. Fill it up with the eggshells and grind them till they're like a fine dust-like consistency. Now you can sprinkle that fine eggshell dust on top of your soil of all of your household plants or in your garden for added nutrients. 
I found this birdhouse in the dump. I thought I could upcycle it. It's in really rough shape, but I think I can still save it. I scraped off some embellishments that were on it that I didn't want on it anymore, sanded it down, had it nice and clean and ready to put some paint on. I took out the plastic glass and took it outside and gave it a really good spray of black chalk paint. Once that had dried, I brought it in and I painted it with some of my homemade yellow chalk paint. I let that dry and then I took my sanding block that was an 80 grit and really aggressively sanded it. And then I even took the edge of my scissors and went all around the edges and gave it a really distressed look. Put that plexiglass back in the birdhouse, screwed the top back on, and then I was ready to put some graphics on. I'm using Decopage by DecoArt. It's the same product as Mod Podge and you can find it at any craft store. I printed the graphics off on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse the text if you have any words, put it on, let it sit for 24 hours, and then I dampened it with a little rag and a little bit of water and rubbed all of the paper off and we're left with some fun graphics on this birdhouse. I sealed it all up with some matte polyacrylic sealer, let it completely dry, filled it up with bird seed, and I am really happy with the way that this upcycled. Anybody else probably would have just left this in the dump. I saw the potential and I turned it into a really cute bird feeder that I have in my backyard. Old aluminum, I think, frying pan. I have a really great idea to use this in the garden. I've taken this down to the sink and I've given it a really good scrub with some soapy water. And now I'm gonna use some alcohol and clean the inside of it because we're gonna put some Cricut graphics on this. I've designed some graphics. We're gonna print it off on our Explore 3. I got my graphics all weeded and the transfer tape on and I'm just going to peel them off and put them on my frying pan. Make sure I have it nice and centered. And we'll get it stuck down. And I've made a fun sign for the garden. The handle of the frying pan, I've just stuck into the dirt. We have only frozen ground here right now, but once I'm ready to put my garden in, this is going to go out there as decor. It's a beautiful day here. The sun is shining, spring has come, and this is the first project on my to-do list. I saved this bench from the dump, and I'm excited to upcycle it. First of all, I love this paint color and the chippiness and the way it has worn is fabulous. I don't wanna change any of that. I wanna keep all the paint that's there intact. I just wanna freshen it up. It's not in perfect shape. It's really old, but the ornate legs on it and the sides of the bench are just fabulous. It needs a good cleaning. So I'm gonna use some TSP and scrub it down and get all the little bits of dirt and loose paint off. This TSP is great. It'll remove any grease or grime or dirt. And I'm just gonna use my scraper and just remove any loose bits of paint. It always amazes me what people just throw out because this bench had so much potential. Let me know in the comments if you would have saved this from the landfill. Now I'm just gonna use this scuff pad instead of sandpaper because I don't wanna take any of the paint off. I just wanna remove any loose bits that are still there and this works really well because it's a very fine grit. I have it all cleaned and prepped and sanded down and I'm gonna put on my homemade stain to bring out some of the wood grain. Um, I wanna leave as much as the original paint as I could so the stain will make everything all pop and uh, that's what I'm gonna do next. I'll put a link down below in the description and a link up top here of how you can make your own DIY stain. You can make it into any color and it's so cheap and affordable and easy. And I'm just gonna apply the stain over the whole bench, even over the existing paint. Um, and then I, it's just gonna freshen up that wood and bring out the grain and make it uh, pop more. 
And the nice thing about this stain is you can layer it. You can put one layer on. If you think that it's not maybe quite dark enough, you can mix up a little bit more and put more on until you get the desired color that you like. And I think it looks really great. It's really freshened up this wood and it doesn't look so dried out and aged. After you've applied all the stain, you just take a rag and wipe off anywhere where it's still wet. And I thought this would look really cute with a nice quote on the front. I'm going to do my Mod Podge reversed graphic transfer technique to put these words on the front of the bench. I have a full tutorial with step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this technique. I'll put a link down below in the description and up here in the corner. Okay, this is dried completely and I'm just gonna take a damp rag and rub off that paper and you're gonna have the words left on the bench. I love using this technique. It's a great way to update furniture or your upcycled projects or to make wooden signs. And I'm enjoying being out in the sun and enjoying the warm weather and being able to get outside and do some upcycled projects that I've had stored away for the winter in my shed. Okay, and the graphics are all done and I love the way they look on the front of this bench. If you're interested in purchasing these graphics, they're in my Etsy store. I'll put a link down below and up above. We're ready to put on the top coat. I'm putting on a Verithane outdoor polyacrylic sealer. This is going to go in on my deck and it's going to be outside in the elements so I want to make sure that it's sealed really well. So I'll probably And there it is, all finished, and I'm so glad I was able to save it from the landfill. Once I put that top coat of the Verithane on it, it just made that yellow pop, and it looks fantastic. This is my coffee bottom. It's really coffee stained. I can't get it cleaned anymore. The coffee grinds are leaking through and I'm excited to show you the idea that I have to upcycle this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just mask off and tape off the press so we don't get any spray paint on it. And if you've been following along for a while, you know I never throw anything out. If I can upcycle it, it's going to happen. I took it outside and I gave it a couple coats of this beautiful turquoise color. If you want to spray paint plastic, make sure you're buying spray paint that will adhere properly. I wanted to make a little tag to hang off of the bottom when it was all finished. This is just a piece of pressed board already covered in spray paint. I'm off to a good start. I'm painting it with a coat of my black chalk paint, letting it dry, putting on some white chalk paint, and I'm going to do a really fun painting technique on this little tag while we're waiting for my spray paint to dry. I got out some acrylic paint in some really fun colors and I'm just putting drops of it all over that little tag, random spots. There's no rhyme or reason to this painting technique. This is a great technique to do with kids too. After we've got all the paint dotted on that tag, we're gonna get out our cling wrap. Now while the paint is still wet, we're gonna tear off a little piece of that cling wrap, a little bit bigger than the tag, place it into that paint and then just start smearing. I have a video on my channel where I did some wooden signs with this technique and they turned out adorable. I'll put a link down below in the description and you can check that one out after you watch this one. 
So you basically just want to blend all of that paint together. And as you do, you're creating other colors. I just love the way that this one turned out. It almost looks like a tie dyed t-shirt. Now I'm gonna put a graphic on it using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. I printed this off on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse the text. And then we're going to apply it to that little tag once the paint has completely dried. I love this little graphic and it's gonna be perfect to pull this whole project together in the end. I set the tag aside, let it dry for 24 hours, and now we're just going to dampen it with a rag with a little bit of water on it and then rub off the paper. We're gonna have the cutest little graphic on this little wooden tag that we created with the cling wrap painting technique. My spray paint's all dry. Now we're ready to pull this all together. I got these river rocks at the dollar store and I'm just gonna add a bunch in the bottom of that bottom. Be careful when you're putting it in, this is glass. You don't want to have your glass break when you've got to this point. I'm gonna put enough rocks in the bottom of this to fill it up about halfway. And then I'm gonna use my hot glue gun and I'm going to glue that plunger so the lid is at the very top. I'm using my Gorilla Glue, works fantastic and bonds really well. The hot glue is all set and the plunger is stuck up at the top. We're going to put it into the glass and then we're going to fill it up with potting soil, leaving about a quarter of an inch at the top. I picked up some beautiful succulents and we're going to plant those succulents in the top, just pressing them into that topsoil until it looks really pretty. And we've created a beautiful succulent garden from a bottom that was destined to go to the landfill. And I think the little tag finished it off perfectly. I also have the graphic listed in my Etsy store if you're interested in trying to make one of these yourself. sap bucket that I got out of the scrap metal bin at the dump. I'm giving it a really good coat of my homemade chalk paint. I thought this would make a perfect planter for my front porch. I printed off one of my custom napkins to decoupage with one of my favorite farmhouse graphics. I'm using the water transfer method with my Mod Podge and if you haven't tried this technique you need to give it a try. I have a full tutorial I'll put a link down in the description of how you can do this yourself. I actually found all kinds of these sap buckets in that scrap metal bin that day, grabbed them all, and I've made some fantastic projects with them. I'm just using a little piece of a balled up of saran wrap just to push any bubbles or wrinkles out of the graphic. And then I'm gonna seal it up really well with my outdoor polyacrylic sealer so I can put a plant on it and keep it out on my front porch. And I keep it out on my front porch and I just change up the planter for every season. I love when I find these. I just wanted to give it just kind of a whitewash look so I just took my chalk paint and dry brushed over the whole pail. It had a little bit of a dent in it. I tried to get it out with a hammer. I did a little bit but I still think it gives it lots of character. I decided for this pail I'm going to do my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer on it. It's a little bit tricky when you don't have a real good coat of chalk paint for the base underneath but I wanted to give it a try so I put it on, let it sit for 24 hours and then I dampened it with a rag and started to rub off the graphics and actually it worked pretty good. I'm okay with not a perfect transfer on this pail because I want it to look kind of antique and rusty and vintage. So I just took my time and rubbed away and then once it was finished, I put a coat of my polyacrylic outdoor sealer because I'm gonna have this one out on my front porch also. I love when I find these old pails because you can put graphics from any season on them and they make perfect decor for outside. I hate throwing out anything if it's still in good shape. The back of this chair was still in really good shape so we're gonna use that for this project and we're going to use seven spindles. We're gonna turn all of this into a beautiful wind chime. I'm gonna drill some small pilot holes. We're gonna use those little hooks again like we used in our ornaments and I'm going to screw seven of them along the bottom of the back of that chair. 
And once we have them all screwed into the back, I'm going to screw them into the top of each one of those spindles. I'm gonna drill a little pilot hole again and then screw those little hooks in. I got out a bunch of my acrylic paint and I'm gonna turn it into my homemade stain. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link down below in the description and you can check it out. I just love the way that it just stains the wood a nice color. I'm gonna use a different color on each spindle. I love the look of a stained wood and this recipe works perfect for that. Plus I like that you can just mix up a little small batch of it. It gets really expensive if you wanna buy stain in all these different colors. I'm loving all these colors together so far. And now because this is gonna be outside, I'm gonna seal everything up with my engine enamel and then I'm gonna put some penetrating oil on the back of that chair. The engine enamel will seal up those spindles when they're out in the elements and the penetrating oil will also seal that top piece of the chair. I think this is a beautiful way to upcycle an old broken chair. It's now transformed into a beautiful wind chime. <laughs>